Hey, Abraham, and I'm here to host another spectacular edition and another spectacular live stream uh, with some of the most prolific names in the poker industry. Now, if you haven't guessed it yet, the India Poker Championship is back with another edition of the final table series. And this is FTS 2.0. And so you can expect bigger prize pools and one hell of a week of uh, tournament action starting from tomorrow. That's the 7th of March. Now, with the FTS 2.0, it was only right that we brought back some familiar faces from our last FTS live stream and uh, get our viewers to be a part of this as well. Now, if you've been keeping up uh, as uh, uh, you know, we all have been with these live streams, you already know one of our commentators. Uh, and uh, this person is, uh, well, from a poker perspective, he's a heads up, no limit specialist but uh, he's also getting into a Mr. Bollywood space at the moment. <laughs> Please welcome Sam Rizawi. Sam, welcome to the live stream. <laughs> well, how's it going? You okay? <laughs> I'm doing very okay, Sam. And it's good to see that you're growing out the hair, long locks, uh, generally quite dashing with all the Bollywood heroes out here. So I think you're getting there. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of, you know, to actually get into that, you know, Bollywood uh Hollywood uh vibe i need to get the hair you know another year or so i think it will be good <laughs> fair enough as far as hair is concerned well i have not much more than that to say so let's move on to our next uh commentator he's uh, a two-time wsop bracelet winner and uh, he's coming to us all the way from canada and that's of course kevin mcphee hi kevin welcome to the live stream good to see you uh, here thank again. you Thank you for having me back, Peter. I'm really excited to do another uh, final series. I have to say, Kevin, that uh, I'm glad that uh, some uh, of these hair matters have been resolved between you and I, because <laughs> clearly Sam is taking the load for both of us on, on that particular department. So uh, it's, it's good to have you guys here again. And uh, for our third panelist and commentator, of course, uh, we'd like to welcome uh, the first female pro from India and national award winner, Muskan Sethi. Welcome to the live stream, Muskan. Hi. Hello, everyone. So excited to be here. I am um, really excited about FTS and having some uh, fun conversations with you all. Lovely. Now, as usual, with all of these live streams, we bring you a lot of contest questions as well. And that will continue to happen even in the course of the coming week. And so we thought, what best, uh, what other way to do it and kick off uh, a contest in this particular live stream as well. And uh, let me give you viewers a chance to win tickets to FTS 2.0. All you need to do is answer, well, the correct answer. All you need to do is provide the correct answer to this question along with your user ID in the comments, and you will get an opportunity to free roll your way into FTS 2.0. And that question is, and the contest question is, who won the female player of the year in 2015? who won the female player of the year in 2015. So get your answers on there. Make sure that you mention your Spartan Boga ID in the comment section along with the right answer. And uh, if you are a lucky winner, well, you could be, be playing FTS 2.0 really, really soon for free. Now, back to our commentators. As far as uh, the contest question is concerned, we have uh, one of them out there. We'll try and see if we can get you another one too. But for the moment, let's uh, talk to our panelists here. Great to have all of you guys here. Sam, Kevin, uh, you know, since you guys were here the last time, let me begin with you. Uh, we saw a lot of action in FTS uh, a couple of months ago. And uh, I just want to get your general thoughts about what you're like, expecting from this particular edition. Sam, if you can go first. Well, <laughs> if, you know, I. I've been sort of desperate to play some live poker, and uh, we were speaking just briefly before the, about uh, playing online. And I haven't really, um, haven't really, you know, been motivated to play a lot online. So I don't know. Depending depending on how it goes, I guess if, if everyone's still in that mood of wanting to get into uh, get the action going, I think it's going to be just like we saw last, uh, last time: fast and furious things we've never seen before, uh, which is always great. And um, yeah, I think it would just be another, I'm putting it out there now, another week of unpredictable craziness at the tables, hopefully. 
Well, we love unpredictable as much as the next guy on this commentary panel. Kevin, uh, your thoughts on uh, what we could possibly expect in this particular edition? Well, I'm hoping for just more of the same. I mean, we had such a good time last time. I mean, the action was fast and furious, and really you get the best and brightest of India's poker talent coming out for these. So I'm looking for some of the stronger players to do some repeat performances, I and mean, we saw some familiar faces and some repeat faces at the final tables last time. So I'm just looking for some of those top players to come back again. And, you know, I'm looking for, for some some more amateur and up-and-coming players getting in there and mix it up again, too. I mean, it was really spicy last time, and I'm looking for a lot more fun this this time around as well. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that that uh, the new faces, the upcoming players, so to speak, who are not that well-known. Uh, even one of our uh, well-known pros, uh, Sangeet Mohan, he mentioned the same thing as well in the IOPC broadcast that we did not too long ago that he was always hoping that a, a new player, an up-and-coming player who's not that well-known, you know, makes it to these final tables and scores a few titles because that's just generally good for the overall, um, you know, benefit of the game. So, yeah, let's hope that uh, we see some crazy action and we see some new faces as well. Muskan, it's, uh, let me come to you. Uh, it's been your first time on this particular live stream. Uh, we're really excited to have you here. Uh, are you excited and what are you looking forward to in the course of this week? Of course, I'm really excited. And you know, the one thing that I'm looking forward to is something that doesn't happen often. So we see a lot of spots that, you know, are quite common, but I'm looking out for things uh, that are unconventional, like players that take, uh, you know, a different line. And those are the things I want to look out. I want to uh, also, like the, like like Kevin and Sam said, you know, there, there are obviously some familiar faces, new faces, but there's always good poker. There's such, such good poker to watch and learn from. And I really want to, uh, you know, get deep in those spots um, and probably learn something from them and uh, kind of teach our viewers as well. That's actually a very interesting point that uh, you made, Muskan, because uh, I think the the flip side of uh, watching just the final tables uh, and commenting on them is the fact that you've got really the cream of the crop, the really good players who are playing there. And so there's not too many of those, if I can call it, brain farts that usually happen <laughs> in the course of some of these hands. And so we don't get to see those funny moments and why did he do that or why did she shove all in in that spot those kind of things are something that we've not really seen but uh, who knows we might just get surprised once again but i would like to move on to possibly the the most daunting question in the poker community today which is that sam razavi is expected to make his bollywood debut really soon uh, your comments on that sam because clearly the hair has been grown there's a lot of uh, 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 song and dance uh, classes that are being taken, I believe. <laughs> Actually, Sam, uh, we can help you get a role. So why don't you tell us what kind of character would you like to play? <laughs> well, you oh, know, like completely serious when she says that, yeah? <laughs> tell us. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I I've just heard that kuch kuch hota hai. But is there any other Bollywood movie that you actually watched or is there any actor that you you know are fond of? Because I I know you watch Bollywood. No, I mean I used to watch I used to watch Bollywood movies. I don't know why when I was about uh, twelve, they were on they were always on TV in the UK. But they're always I don't know if they're still as long, but they used to be about four hours long, I think. <laughs> or maybe I just assumed that because I was younger. But um, is is a uh, is three is it called three idiots is that a, is that a oh idiot? yeah that's a great movie yes i think i have to say that's probably one of my fav favorite movies of all time it is amazing and i just i don't know kevin if you if you've seen it or okay what character would you play from that movie huh what character would you play from that movie three idiots uh i i saw it a, a few years ago so i wouldn't be able to pinpoint um, you can be the guy who challenges them that, okay, let's meet on this date. <laughs> or do you want to be one of those? <laughs> you were such a funny one. <laughs> I remember they sort of meet on an island or something at the end. I can't, I can't exactly yeah. remember, but oh, it's just such an amazing movie. It, it, it just encompasses everything about, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not really preaching because I'm, I guess everyone that's watching the stream has seen it probably, but um, I, yeah, I, I'm, 
glad I, I was, we brought this conversation with Molly with that because uh, I need to pull that. Peter, let's work on this, okay? We're going to get him like a nice uh, sure. role in it. Seeing as Sam is so comfortable with all of this uh, Bollywood attention on him, I've just been told that there's a video that we can actually play. So just some additional uh, ammunition for, well, perhaps Kevin. Yeah, there you go. The eyebrows have shot up. So let's play that video <laughs> with Sam singing that. <laughs> So, uh, someone's in the chat saying that Kevin made sure there's a customized background for Indian viewers. Kevin, <laughs> that is actually. I, I just think. Master tells me the FTS has medallions. Oh, skills medallions. Board medallions. Oh, diamond medallions. Master wants the precious. Give me, give me those medallions. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. You're hired. Oh, well, I think if, if so not, sick. Well, definitely calling you sometime soon. So yeah, I guess it's Sam. <laughs> okay, chat, chat found that scary, but yeah, that was good. <laughs> and uh, Sam's not shy about his singing voice either, so he's already done the Kuch Kuch Hota a bit, uh, but I think he's flexing his vocal chops to try and uh, sing some more Bollywood songs. So to all our viewers, here's a not so contesty question, but maybe you can drop your suggestions about what song Sam should sing next. Give him something to aim for because he's catering to the Indian audience this way. So drop your suggestions in the comments below. And uh, if you want Sam to enact a scene from your favorite movie, well, who knows, he might just oblige you. So let's get that fun bit going uh, as soon as possible in the comment section. Get it down there. And uh, getting back to the poker though, uh, FTS Season 1 had, of course, 8 crores in guaranteed prize pools. And uh, it did cross that quite comfortably. Now with FTS 2.0, it's back, it's bigger, it's bolder, and it's got 10 crores in guaranteed prizes, which is, well, that's a lot of zeros. I don't even know how many zeros are in that particular figure, but it's a lot. So clearly, uh, you know, Kevin, Sam, we, we saw the guarantee being crushed the last time around. And um, I think uh, it, it's safe to say that we might cross this 10 crore guarantee this time around as well. Yeah, I think that this is going to be an even bigger series now. Um, you know, you just have everybody locked in at home, itching to play some poker. And uh, I think this one's going to smash the guarantee. There's going to be a lot of action. Yeah, I yeah, fair think, enough. Uh, Sam, you think the same? Yeah, I think once they realise there's a you know a true Bollywood star, that's <laughs> and, you know, I think they, <laughs> they, Sam, I have good. a I have a scene for you. Why don't you play like a um um a, like a villain, uh, like you know how Rounders KGB, but like yeah. for Bollywood for a Bollywood movie, a poker movie. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I would like to see you uh, do something like that, but for like, just customize it for Bollywood. Uh, I can't remember what's he, what's he doing in that that movie, Teddy KGB. Yeah, hey. so so saying don't like you know I will stash my chips, you know the, I will stash the pot however I want until that stash thing you can. Whenever the, I like. Yeah, you gotta do that. Some something like that for uh, Bollywood also. Okay, done. Still up <laughs> from the last time, yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah, I think it's going to, definitely, it's just going to smash the guarantee. If it smashed it last time, um, being the first, the first edition, I think, I'd, I'd go so far as saying, you know, it'll hit double. So, anyway, we'll see, we'll see what transpires. Well, given that uh, we're going to be spending a fair amount of time with each other over the course of this next one week, let's uh, spice things up a little bit with uh, uh, a little bit of a side bet as to what that figure would be. What do you guys think? Yes. Mm, All right, Mr. I'm what do you think? For it. I think it's going to smash uh, the guarantee. So, uh, Sam, is there anyone who wants to bet against? Ten crores is the guarantee amount. What do you think? Let's let's put two decimal. Oh yeah. So we gotta come up with the number. So what do we do? Oh. Chinese auction this up, and then somebody takes the under. <laughs> yeah, it'll be under and over. Give me a number, and we can do that. Peter, you give us a number, and <laughs> let's do under and over. Hmm. 
no 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 we're not going we're not we're not doing this for like uh, serious money here because that'll just send all kinds <laughs> of wrong signals out there. no it's no, just it's nothing to do uh, with money it's about respect final, points final bet. uh i'm going to i'm going to say uh 10.88 as my figure over <laughs> okay yeah even I'll i take, say over i'll take the over peter <laughs> sam what about you yeah I'm, come on go against the grain i'll go I'll, i'll i'll go you know over 11 i mean well i mean i'll go 11 but i i won't even go i, I think it's going to I think it's going to destroy it to be honest. I I go I don't know exactly what number I'm saying here because I, I like I, I'm not sure the <laughs> but I'd go yeah 11.5 What's the point well, something? We'll, I'm I'm sure we we'll, I'm sure we'll revisit this uh, during the live stream so no worries. Okay. Um all right. So as the commentators and the panel discuss that figure amongst themselves um let me let me individually ask you guys about uh, your personal preferences uh, you know in the course of playing live or online uh, Kevin let me ask you you know you you won uh, a couple of WSOP bracelets um you've seen the schedule the last time it is somewhat uh, in the same line but from an online tournaments perspective what do you generally like to play uh, in terms of formats in terms of Um well I like I think Peter cut out there but mm -hmm. as far as tournaments I like to play I like to play the ones with the biggest guarantees with trophies up top so when you have a nice big prize pool up for grabs here and you have the gold and silver medallions up for grabs for every event winner that's certainly going to bring out a lot of people so I like the hardware I like the trophies and the prizes so Uh I I I think I like to come out for those big flagship tournaments. That's usually what I like to target. I like the bigger the field size, the bigger the field size the better. Uh the more prize pool is generated, so I look for those big flagship tournaments, especially ones that give away some hardware. I completely agree with uh, Kevin here because very few of them give away uh medallions and crowns and stuff like that so for for me uh it's it's like quite an ex exciting experience because that's the reason why most people also play live uh it's not about the trophy but it's, it's like a very social experience uh but what's happening with these tournaments online is that it's focused such a small community that everyone knows each other and uh, it's becoming um somewhat like you know almost experience of like going and playing live and um, especially when you're stuck at home i feel like this is the best and also um i feel like fts has so many featured events so number of more featured events is re always really nice uh which leads up to the main event because even those could potentially be uh, you know a, a big um, boost to your bank roll uh, because everyone's still grinding they're in the zone and they keep you in the zone uh, you know for that one week or 10 days so i um, i really like that what do you think sam yeah sorry um <laughs> uh Yeah, like, I mean, if 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 it's the you know the question is the uh, choice between live or online, um, I can't lie and say that you know I, I, sort of, I love for playing online sort of, um, dwindled so to speak. But I think it's only because only because of lockdown and you know if my son wasn't there twenty four seven, I'd be able to get more involved. But I'm definitely just like we discussed last time, any tournament that has some sort of trophy or medallion uh being awarded you know i have to have to chase it and especially if there's i don't want to jump ahead of, of, of anything but i think people will probably discuss about the leaderboard perhaps and uh, if there's anything else you know any other incentives you know it's uh it's something that we'll be fighting for and um yeah quite frankly i wish that we could play um we could play these indian series because uh because that is one thing that would uh, you know would attract me to play um to actually go back to playing online the, the thought of uh, winning a trophy or a medallion or whatever 
All right, uh, Muskan, you know a lot of these players who are uh, going to be playing in this particular thing. Um, any picks as far as uh, who do you think would uh, do well uh, in the upcoming FTS? Like a few names oh, wow, that you can Peter, think of. So many, so many. And, you know, I'll tell you something. A lot of players have been preparing also for FTS. So um, as far as I know, um, everyone has been, you know, everyone's in their lab. They're working on um, uh, the series because it's going to potentially, um, you know, um, mark your year. Um, how 2021 is going to be for you, how you're going to probably uh, plan your schedule, life schedules when things get back to normal. So I feel like a lot of players have their eyes on this one. Apart from seeing, the, obviously, those crushers again and again i obviously want to see some new faces also because i know a lot of a lot of them are getting there and this time we're going to see them uh so that is um like instead of me picking a name or it will be really hard for me uh to give you uh that but yes i'm sure like i won't be surprised to see so many of them because i know that everyone's been really putting in the work we're going to have one more question for Muskan a little bit later about a boxing match. But uh, before that, uh, let's talk to you about something called Game Face. Have you guys tried out uh, the new Instagram filter for FPS 2.0? No, I want to try that. Okay, I'm going to try that right now <laughs> after this call. All right, cool. So that's uh, the game face AR filter that you can actually uh, check out. Uh, it's part of the Instagram thing. I don't quite understand Instagram as well as uh, some of these younger kids do, but uh, it looks like fun and we should definitely check it out uh, and uh, get that challenge going as well. Um, I'm just going to have a look at, yep, there's the link. Oh, it's like a contest. It's, it gives you a score and stuff also. It says get the highest score within 60 seconds and win amazing prizes. Wow. Okay. All right. I think I'm facing some connectivity issues here. But link going. We'll come back to this uh, in a while. But before that, uh, let me just check if we've got any cont, uh, questions or comments from the live stream at the moment which i can pass on to our yes a lot of players have guessed um for the question um female player of the year 2015. most of them are saying it's livery but we will reveal the answer <laughs> Kevin, these guys are really naughty. Don't worry. This was all. A, this was planned, pre-planned by Ke uh, Peter. <laughs> well, I think uh, apologies to our viewers. We are facing some technical difficulties uh, at the moment. But uh, as far as uh, you know, the FTS two is concerned, it's uh, ten crores as a guaranteed prize pool. But more importantly, and uh, very, very uh, concerning, especially to Sam, is all of those medallions that are coming through to all of those winners, the gold medallions, the silver medallions. And these will be given to the feature tournament winners. So uh, all of you who are going to win those titles, please expect a call all the way from the UK. Uh, to be haunted by a certain Mr. Azavi who's, who's going to uh, try and convince you to part with your uh, precious soon enough so uh, i'd also like to tell you about uh, the main event champion who's going to walk away with a dazzling 18 carat gold so yeah peter's nagging now Sam, like this this is when you jump in dazzling <laughs> 18 carat gold diamond studded medallion i think <laughs> I think that's what it is. And um, yeah, as you said, I, I definitely, anyone that wins the medallion, uh, let me know if you need to part for it for some extra bank roll. It would look very nice on my on my wall. I haven't had a trophy for many years. So um, yeah, I mean, and what's better than one? It's two or three. So I think. Uh, 
Sam's going to be calling all of the winners <laughs> in the course of this week to try and convince them to get that thing going. So, yeah. I think uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, what we experienced the last time, except for one particular tournament, which went on for a little over 90 minutes, everything else just wrapped up within like an hour or maybe about 45 to 50 minutes. Uh, do you think uh, players are going to be a little more circumspect when they play this particular edition? Are they going to be as crazy as they were last time with, you know, the action popping all over the place, uh, Kevin? They're going to be as crazy as last time. I mean, I'm expecting some wild action, you know. You know, I, I I think some people lost their fold button for the final tables last time. So we're gonna we're gonna see a lot of action. We're gonna see some a lot of ICM pressure. You know, we're gonna see fast and furious action. I mean, man, the final tables were so quick last time. You know, and uh, the exception of a couple of events, which, which I'm I'm hoping we get to extend some play and see a. Uh, prolonged heads up match that was pretty fun last time but I, but I i'm expecting pretty pretty quick final tables a lot of action and uh not too much folding so yeah i'm literally looking forward to it yeah i think, uh, sam, I I think um, sorry yeah, please go on. sorry yeah i was gonna say i think uh, some of that was if i if i recall uh was it due to sort of a couple of deals being made free-handed and then and then things just sort of uh, being wrapped up automatically. I don't know if that's um, if the deal making is still in place uh, for this series. I guess we'll find that out later. But yeah, of course. I mean, um, in a nutshell, I don't expect the action to really slow down. I expect to see the same, you know, fast paced fast paced game gameplay and. You know, I don't know. Again, with the medallions up top, I don't know what, how the dealing will affect that. Uh, um, whether the, you know, if, if, if you if you have you have a chip lead, you automatically win the medallion, or you chop it three ways. The medallions are very important, by the way. I know this is uh, forget the money. This is this is the, <laughs> the medallions is the important part here. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. I'm not sure exactly how it is, um, but. I guess we'll see going forwards whether whether those deal making possibilities are, uh, are still there. Yeah, in fact, uh, the one tournament that went on the longest uh, in in all of those final tables was only because um, one of the players got lucky uh, on the river, and so that allowed him to get some chips and extend that. I, I think it was uh, Dhiru ninety one, if I'm not wrong, who uh, was the beneficiary in that particular thing but he played really well and eventually of course went on to win that so uh yeah there's a lot of action that you guys can expect um and as far as uh the uh the deal making on the final table is concerned like both these gentlemen have said we're going to experience that uh, very very shortly tomorrow in fact is when it begins and we'll begin with uh, this particular fts uh, and i think there should be a lot of uh, fireworks i don't think anyone's going to be shy about uh, coming out there with all guns blazing. So um, my question to uh, all of you all uh, also is that um, what I, I know this is like a really done to death question, but it still holds so much importance and relevance in uh, the course of, uh, you know, someone's uh, playing career. Uh, and I'm going to ask each of you what, what your thoughts are. Most of the players uh, or if not all players have hit that bad patch, uh, you know, of uh, not really getting those results despite playing well. Um, what are your tips? Uh, and I'm going to ask each of you all to maybe give one or two tips. How do you get out of that? How do you battle that mindset of, you know, those losses, even when you're playing well? Um, how do you get beyond, um, you know, uh, go against the rut that you're facing and then try and get onto the positive side of things? Uh, Sam? It's quite an interesting one because uh, when it comes to poker or in general, I'm not I'm not a very superstitious person, but I do believe, and I don't want to go too deep into it, in energies and what I found when I first started playing online, it was really strange. And um, it's not meant to be a sort of a brag, but I, I realized that I would win consistently for exactly three or four months and then i have one month where i couldn't win like um 
I'd just go on on a downswing. It'd be bizarre, and it was a it was a pattern. So I don't know I don't know how to explain it. All I knew was, as soon as I noticed that things were sort of, I'd, I'd reached that that point where things were turning. It's all about discipline, and you know, if you play if you play at a certain level, just continue playing and exercising your game, but drop down a level so you're not exposing yourself so much in terms of bankroll. I mean, it, it's tough, really. Discipline is the, the number one, though, that's all. Um, because at the end of the day, with, with poker, you know, it is a skill game. And in, in the, long, the long run, if you, you know, the more experienced and the more learned players will win. But there is, that, there is a, a slight element of luck there. So, and I do believe you know, poker tr tr translates to life in a lot of ways. Um, you know, when the chips are down, they're really down. And when they're up, nothing goes wrong. So when you notice that things aren't going your way, um, I wouldn't necessarily say just take a break and just come back because you need to keep exercising your game. But definitely be aware. Do not, just do not try and push the issue because it will just get worse. So uh, if you're on a downswing, discipline. Discipline is the key until you see that things are changing. Kevin, uh, your thoughts on this? Well, I've been a professional poker player now for quite a few years, 15 years, and 13 years on the circuit. Downswings are just a part of the game, you know? I mean, they come and they go. And really what you need to do is just focus on what you can control. You can't control variance. You can control how you manage your bankroll, so you need to not leave yourself exposed. You can control the amount of studying you put into the game. And as long as you're out there with a, with a good, clear headspace, executing properly, and, you know, downswings will happen, natural part of the game. So uh, every time I play, I try to make sure that I play the tournament well. If I, there's a hand that comes up that I'm questioning and it could be even a smaller hand not even your bust out hand you know then i take it back to my friends we go back to the lab we study it we go back more prepared next time but really when it comes to dealing with downswings you always need to be visualizing success you need to be seeing yourself at that final table knowing that you are prepared to sit in your chair and be engaged for the duration of the tournament and try to always bring your A-game, and hopefully that will help minimize your downswings. A good friend of mine, Ape Styles, who's probably one of the more prolific online players of all time, Jonathan Van Fleet, says that he makes most of his money through his downswings. And I think that's a pretty profound statement, because the way that he deals with tilt, and the way that he puts in effort into studying the game away from the table, helps him deal with those downswings in the best way possible. Other people might lose their minds when they're downswinging, start degening too much, start playing too much hands, chasing losses. But if you just stick to what you know, you'll be able to deal with those throughout your career. And I, I've certainly had moments where I've gone 0 for 50 in live tournaments, you know, and, and I've had huge downswings online. But as long as you continue taking an academic approach to the game, managing your bankroll and constantly learning, you'll be able to weather the storm of those downswings. Fair point by both uh, yes. our esteemed commentators. Muskan, you've basically started your poker career, and correct me if I'm wrong, from the online uh, scheme of things, of course, the shark cage appearance and, um, you know, several things after that as well. Um, give us an idea from, a, from an online specific perspective, you know, what are the things that you personally would do to, to get out or to look beyond the downswings that you're there so it doesn't sort of trap you in a sense? What are your sort of go-to moves uh, that you tend to sort of rely on? So, so I completely agree with Sam and Kevin. Those two points are really important, and I try to remind myself that uh, one that you know discipline is the key. If I am not doing those uh, five to ten things that I'm supposed to uh, as a player, like studying, taking care of my health, taking care of my like you know sticking to the, the discipline. If I'm not doing that, I don't have the right to complain. 
and secondly i can do not have the time to uh, uh, think about things that are not in my control so you know i don't i completely like sometimes i feel like when people come to me and talk about bad beats i feel like why are they even surprised about down swings because that that is the nature that of the game right like you will have to you will lose and you should be embracing uh, variance you should understand that you know this is the reason why you make your money um you know and uh, like so that's what something like so for me down swings are never like okay now this is the point where i need to do something different i just feel like i'm in a process and i'm going to come out of it if i just keep doing like I, it's like you know reaching 99 and then taking a u turn you're not supposed to do that you you are going to you know uh, it's a, it's a swingy right poker is one so you got to um, be ready for both and you know you learn a lot and like he, like kevin said that you know ape style makes his most money in down swings that's actually true a lot of players they they just know that you know this the next thing is success if you stick to what you're doing and you you know you stick around you you know instead of taking a break or just being like okay it's not for me like i really don't understand what, what, why are you surprised uh, you know this is uh, this is what poker is about um so yeah that's what i do i just remember i just remind myself that okay what can i control i can probably so when i you know it's like a reset button that i just feel like okay i'm not in sync i got to work more hard i got to put my mind more uh, you know in the present and that's that's something like focus is important Mic drop. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody wrote a very um, nice comment here. There will be darkness sometimes, but with proper mental game and preparation, there comes light. That's that's nice. Yeah, unfortunately, downswings are inevitable. They will come. So yep. it's about your mental fortitude. And there you have it, folks. Uh, people who are far more knowledgeable than I. <laughs> so um one more thing that i'm i'm a little curious about yeah we can hear you peter mm -hmm. yeah go ahead <laughs> your curiosity is killing me this is like you know like actual like he's on a uh, so, news um, channel so one question that i wanted to ask uh, all of you again is uh you know, players are constantly looking for resources to try and improve their game, uh, whether it is a book, whether it is a video. Um, what would be the what would be the the number one pick for you right now? Because there are so many resources and videos and books that are coming through. I just feel like people who are putting in the effort right now, like you know, you got to keep up with times. So you know, you got to. Um, because uh, his poker is evolving all the time. What happened, guys? Why are you laughing? Sorry, I'm, I'm facing a little bit of lag here. <laughs> um, like, so yeah, well, my question was basically, uh, what's the the newest resource or a video, a book, something that you've come across that you could perhaps recommend for uh, our viewers in terms of bettering their game? Whether it is from a playing perspective, whether it is from a, uh, a mindset perspective, uh, any kind of a resource that is relatively Uh, I can field that if you'd like. Um, yeah, I mean, when I first started in poker, and every time I'd have a winning session... There's a slight lie. Would... Please, please continue. Oh, sorry. So every time I'd start... I, 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 when I started in poker, every time I'd have a winning session, I would put a little bit of money aside and purchase a poker book. And I probably read about 60 poker books that way. That was 15 yeah, years ago. Times have changed a lot. Uh, especially considering learning tools. So so right now, you know, in the past we had more passive learning ability that is reading books, watching videos, training videos, stuff like that. Poker training has been revolutionized now that it is much more active with training programs like Pio Solver, uh, Munker and uh, other other programs, it's it's just much more easy to get very very technical and get into the nitty gritty and for me personally uh i've been advancing my game just by having groups of friends that i can discuss hands with so one thing i've done is i've started a discord 
Uh, and then I invited my friends to the Discord so we can post hands, we can talk about hands, and then we can use the software like PyoSolver and other learning tools to be more active and in the trenches, actually learning, looking at solves. So for me, uh, whereas before I much preferred passive learning as in videos and, and books and stuff, uh, now I much prefer active learning, talking through hands with my friends, looking at outputs of solves, and really, there is a wealth of programs to look at right now. So uh, just seek out other friends that you think are better than you at poker and try to get in a group with them and try to discuss hands with them. And I think that'll help advance anybody's game. You know, that's that's really the the thing that'll that'll supercharge your game is working with other people and active learning as opposed to passive. Kevin, do you agree with like um, a lot of people say that, you know, the top five players that you hang out with or like the five players that you hang with, you're going to be average of that <laughs> pool. Uh, it's just like having friends, like, you know, you're going to be average of the five people you uh, spend time with. So similarly, when you're making a poker group, do you think it's important to um, stop those uh, players who are, you know, kind of uh, bringing in negativity, for example, they're bringing in... Um, you know, like maybe um, talking about bad beats and things which are very obvious, like they're like not getting that point. So do you think it's important to stop your friends and kind of get them on track and be like, okay, you got to just, you're, you have a collective memory and you're just remembering your bad beats and not the ones that you give to others. So is it important to do that or is it fine? It's um, something about that because every nowadays a lot of us have those poker groups and um, I guess we are like it's it's easy to study, but it's not that easy to filter out people like that. Yeah, well, for me, the most important thing in in choosing anybody that I want to study poker with is just having somebody who's very passionate about it. I mean, that's first and foremost the most important thing. Uh, you want somebody who wants to study, who wants to be in there talking about hands with you, and certainly there'll be some, you know, expressing of frustrations of bad beats from time to time. But really, when you're doing a nice study group, I mean, it's pretty easy these days to get a hand history review, go through hand by hand. It might be a little bit humbling, but you will learn a lot from it. So I think you can, you can do away with a lot of the bad beat talk pretty quickly by just getting into the actual hand histories and start looking at hands and start doing, doing some solves and then looking at the outputs with your buddies. And, and it doesn't really matter even if they're they're bad because you're sitting there looking at what the solves say and yeah. if your your friend's thought process is wrong then you just talk through it with them you know and and figure out why what what hands are are or why a hand is doing this and why another hand is doing this and why the outputs are that way and uh, really as long as you have people who are passionate about it and believe believe advancing their game and want to take an academic approach to the game. That's really the most important thing is just having a hunger and passion to want to be better at the game. And if you have mm -hmm. that, then over time you will become better and especially with active studying. That's so, that's so interesting. Thank you, Kevin. Even I, um, you know, that active studying point is actually very interesting um, because, you know, you uh, instead of just um, getting your head and just watching all these long, long videos and you don't even know what you're making of it. Even if you're writing down notes, you're not really actually applying these uh, theories unless you actually have a study group where you're, you know, um, working on things and actual hand histories. So that is that is very interesting. And I feel like uh, these are the times when we can even discuss different board textures. You know, that is something people miss out on. They're just learning all these charts and ranges. They're not understanding like that, you know, there are a few different types of board textures where you don't have to do the same things that the chart is telling you or a different scenario, right? Um, so these are the things that come in when you look at each and every individual hands and, um, you know, you, you put in that practice. So. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and and really, poker is you know always going to be far from solved. You know, you're you're going to have such dynamic player personalities in the mix. They're not always going to be doing what the computer program says they're going to do. You know, so you can study your game theory optimal play. And there's basically two schools of thoughts in poker. Uh, schools of thought in poker, and that is game theory optimal and exploitive. And when you're playing with a wide variety of of player personalities, you're going to be deviating from game theory optimal to exploitive a lot more. 
And certainly, we're going to see a lot of that in the final table series here. We're going to see a lot of ICM pressure, a lot of exploitive play. And yeah. we're going to see some unconventional things as well because of the changing player dynamics. And that's what's so fun about learning poker is like even if you learn game theory optimal and become perfect at it, you still have to be sort of like a jazz musician. You have this fundamental of poker theory that you're working off of, but you're expanding it based upon the new variables that you have, the new player personalities, the ever-changing chip stacks, the changing positions. And it's just a puzzle that you're trying to figure out. And that's what makes poker so rewarding is that... You know, it's it's a it really is a mental game, and it really does challenge. Uh, you know, to try to find the optimal line does not always necessarily mean game theory optimal, and that's what's so fun about getting a group of people that maybe think and study different from you, is that now you can have new perspectives on how to play, how to maybe expand off the of game theory optimal to start exploiting more opponents, and that's why it's it's really nice to have a mix of player of personalities in your study groups you know one crazy guy one nit one guy who's just super technical and throw them all together and 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 talk and you know i'm sure that all of everybody's games will improve because of it well uh, we've got a couple of questions coming in from uh, the people who are following uh, this particular live stream a very pointed question in fact um, this gentleman is asking that if he's at the final table with the shortest stack on that table, and he gets dealt pocket sixes, what should he do? Sam? I mean, it's it's kind of impossible to answer correctly without some very specific uh, details about the hand. And I know it's sort of a, a nutshell question, but for me, from a personal point of view, it, it would depend, number one, on Okay, you're the shortest stack, but how many how many big blinds do you have? Uh, if you're if you're short and you've got twenty big blinds, then playing pocket sixes then depends on what position you're playing it from. Um, depends on the tendencies of the other players at the table. It's really difficult to to actually answer that question without all those factors. It depends how much you know what what the ICM considerations are. You know, is the next pay dump. Ten thousand dollars or ten dollars, you know, because you can't deny that 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 decision will, you know, vary based on, you know, each and every poker player's own personal finances or life or feeling at the time. So it's it's a really quite impossible to answer. If I've got a couple of big blinds, I'll get it in probably from any position, I guess. If there's big ICM considerations and there's a good chance that someone might just go crazy and, and bust before me and ignore the fact that I've only got two big lines. I might try and just hold on for dear life. You know, it's it's um yeah, it's it's, it's a tough one to answer without without specifics. Well to the viewer who asked that question, me. Sam's given you like a very <laughs> uh, big explanation for that, but I'll give you the most common answer that you will find in poker for any question. It depends. <laughs> and, oh, I'll give you a better a better answer. When in doubt, jam. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. The aggression rules the rules. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, we've got uh, one more question, and I think it's an extension of the same thing. Should I take a risk with such a hand? Uh, again, sir, it depends. And <laughs> Sam has given you like a whole bunch of things that you want to take into consideration. There is a clock that will run out on you if you take all the time in the world to come to the decision of whether you want to go ahead with that. You could also follow Muskan Sethi's advice of just jam when you're in doubt. So <laughs> I think either way, these are things that need to be considered uh, at that spot. But hey, man, if you make the final table, good on you. You've actually made some money and, uh, you know, it's, it's just a question of making more money. So how much more of that pay jump do you want to actually capture is the question there. So, yeah. Um, I'm just going to take a look if we have another, yes, we have another question. If you are holding, uh, Muskan, maybe you can help us out here. If you are yeah, holding sure. king <laughs> and the flop is king a6, what do you do if the chip leader tries to jam you? And it depends. This guy, it's the same person who's asking <laughs> the question. Uh, actually, yeah, Kevin is saying fold, snap fold. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, well, I, I guess you just fold here. Yeah. 
unless you've put in 99% of your chips pre-flop and you have yeah. like one big blind lens. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Of course, it's a, in a nutshell. Of why we're here. Hopefully that would have answered both those questions of this gentleman. What I like about this, guys, is the fact that uh, this person is very confident of making the final table. And I really love that. Uh, he's only asking questions in positions that he's going to find himself at when he's on the final table. So that's a that's great amazing. mentality to have for right yeah. off the get go. It's not Deval, is it, asking these questions under a pseudonym? Or... <laughs> <laughs> It's been a while since he's made a final. Maybe he's, you know, trying to get some hints and tips. <laughs> wow. I, I, would, I get, like, blasted if I ask these questions from my coaches. They're like, can you be more specific? Who is sitting where? Who had how much? Who was there? Who was in this? And were there any shorter stacks on the other table? Like, you know, I just, uh, I'm scared to ask uh, questions like that. But then at the other, uh, like on the other side, you have to, you know, not be shy and ask whatever that comes to your mind because that's how you improve, you know? So it's it's okay. We, we welcome such questions. <laughs> yeah, I think a lot of people get thrown off by the fact that they might look dumb or feel uh, like they're coming across like a noob, but I think no matter what, um, and I'm sure every one of you has been in this position that, you know, there are no stupid questions, at least at, at a certain point in time. So everything is is got some learning to it. Um, we've so got one a, question from the same guy who's saying, how's the Josh for the FTS? And for our foreign commentators here, Josh stands for uh, spirit, uh, you know, uh, What's the better word for to describe Josh? Spirit, right? Spiritedness, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to. It's, it's uh, high. It's amazing. And uh, I have one very important question that I see in the chat that says, uh, "What do you suggest players to do before the tournament starts?" I feel like if you a lot of players who live alone, I, I think they should just sort out their meals. Like, you know, maybe if they have, they have to have dinner, lunch, whatever, uh, organize it. Like, you know, don't have anywhere else to go. Don't have anybody disturb you in those hours. You know, don't have, uh, don't commit to other things um, during those few days that you're playing. Um, don't, uh, I guess, those are just like maybe doing some meditation. Uh, and something that really, really personally helps me is working out. If I have even worked out 45 minutes or 30 minutes, I don't know why, like, every like just i'm in sync and if i'm not if i haven't worked out or done a little bit of any sort of natural exercise i just feel like i'm a little bit out of it so that is uh, my take and what do you have to say sam and kevin yeah i think um i think working out although i haven't worked out for about five years um <laughs> no, it's, it's also start now bollywood is calling <laughs> Exactly. I'm going to be taking horse riding lessons, stunt lessons very, very shortly. <laughs> I feel sorry for the horse. Um, but the, uh, <laughs> uh, the um, yeah, if you've got a healthy, you know, healthy body, you've got a healthy mind, obviously. But extending from that, I'd just say but never rush to the, the tournament either. You know, just make sure, make sure you know when, you, you know, you know when, you know when you when you, when you need to play, get in there, have your coffee or eat or whatever. Don't go rushing in because more likely than not, you know, you'll sit down and you pick up a hand and you, you haven't you haven't, you haven't managed to sit and relax into your, um, I mean, of course, we're talking about, I'm, I'm back to thinking and dreaming about the live days, but uh, um, online, I guess it's the same thing. You know, just be prepared. Uh, don't be distracted. Uh, give yourself, you know, that, that time if you're playing a big session, you know, half Make sure everything you need to have done is done you know, half an hour before and you can really settle into to a session and focus on it 100%. Well, we've got one more question from uh, Arindam Nayak who says, uh, suppose a player has a limited and smaller bankroll and they qualify to a big buy-in tournament uh, or event and somehow they make it to the money. Should they knit up absolutely or play exploitative uh, with a lot of the regs, uh, you know, three betting and such like? I mean, should the pay jumps be considered or do you go, uh, you know, do you go absolutely nitty because of that? Well, I don't think you need to go to any sort of extremes here. I mean, just because you're playing 
you know, in a bigger buy-in event, potentially a little bit tough for players, doesn't mean you should deviate from your normal strategy too much. So um, I, I would say just stick to your guns, you know, do it, do what got you there and, and keep playing one hand at a time and just keep trying to make good decisions. And, and back to what these guys say, you just really want to sit down engaged every time you sit down to play poker. You know, you want to be prepared to win and have that winning mentality where you can, you know, when you click register, you're going to be committed for, what is it, six hours, seven hours to finish one of these tournaments and that you need to have no distractions. You need to have your food set up. You need to, you know, sit down prepared so you don't have any sort of crisis or emergency happen in the middle and uh, just just sit down and play your game. But when it comes to to satelling into a bigger event, you know, it doesn't matter what the buy in is. You just keep playing your game, you know, just because the buy-in's higher doesn't change any of the variables. You're still focusing on managing your stack. You're still looking at what position you're in. You're still paying attention to the hands that others player, players play. And you just want to be engaged and paying attention the entire time and make sure you bring your A game. So uh, I don't think there's any need to deviate once you're in the money. Certainly there'll be some ICM spots and... Uh, the big buy-in might be a little intimidating, but it's just a buy-in. It's just the same as if it was an $11 tournament or a $100 tournament or a $1,000 tournament. Still, the variables are the same, so it doesn't matter. If, if you don't mind, I know the time maybe is limited, but I just really wanted to add on to that. Just um, uh, not to be, also not to sort of be intimidated in the sense of, oh no, these players might be better than me. Or, you know, I have, have faith that you've managed to get that far and you know just like anything in life you know just have confidence in yourself um and and you know be proud of what you've achieved and just like kevin basically said you know just play your own game the minute you start deviating from that thinking oh you know how do i how do i sort of ladder up another spot what you really do is you end up you know taking all that hard work you've done to get there and you know, sort of doing yourself a disservice um, yeah. by not by not you know pressing forward with your own game and you know, taking it to to the maximum. So yeah, it's just a game. Um, Muskan, maybe you can answer this particular question uh, where uh, we've uh, we they've asked us that uh, uh, could you throw some light on uh, mid stage Tony strategy? I mean, it's a vast subject, no doubt, but maybe. Uh, a, a small nutshell. Um, I think her audio is all lagged at the same time. <laughs> I think so. Sorry, Muskan, did you did you hear my question? I'm guessing not. Um, someone wants to know about. Okay, there we go. Muskan's uh, facing some internet issues, so I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to you guys. Uh, Kevin, maybe you can sort of uh, let us know um, mid stage tournament strategy. Some basic mid stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, so basically I kind of look at tournaments, I guess you could break it down to even more categories, but I kind of break it down to five categories, right? And mid-stage tournament generally means that you haven't approached, you haven't uh, made it into the money yet, and you're just playing poker. You're just out there in the trenches playing poker, trying to accumulate as many chips as possible. So at this stage of the tournament, when ICM considerations are not a factor, at nearly as much the name of the game is just accumulating chips and uh oftentimes in these middle stages of the tournaments the stacks will be a little bit deeper um so you know getting used to playing three bet pots and maybe studying in some of those spots a, a bit more can be helpful but but really you know just just stick into your guns and and playing your your normal ranges and and you know just trying to accumulate some chips because when it gets to that point, when the bubble is approaching, you want to be one of the big stacks that's that's min raising a lot and applying ICM pressure. Because when that ICM pressure does come into play, because the mid stage sort of implies like ICM is coming up here soon. 
So this is the time in the tournament you want to accumulate ships, and you don't want to spew. So while you do want to accumulate ships, you don't. You do also want to avoid major blunders because you want to make sure that you do cash, and that you have chips to take advantage of the other players on the bubble. Yeah. So those are both very important factors. Before I got disconnected, I was saying the same thing that you know you can't miss a single spot. That's like the most important time where you either you're going to actually make it to the FD or you're going to you know blind down and be in other short stacks. So uh, and also you can't take extreme uh, measures. Like you got to stick to your your guns. You got to play your ranges. You got to you know the way you ha you are reacting to the players. Um, that's it's it's all like it really depends on you know the situation, the kind of table you have then. I completely agree. Sam, completely agree. you're done. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's what we covered there. Yeah. Um, it's the time for chip accumulation. That's it, it's it, time it, to bluff. <laughs> Pull off some I, I, big I was, bluffs. I was actually going to say, I think it's, I think at mid stage of the tournaments are bad times to bluff because you just don't mm -hmm. want to have any massive blunders, and the incentive for them to call you is a lot higher because they don't have ICM considerations. So, um, you know, a lot a lot of games, I, I play a lot of games besides just poker, and a lot of games are just about avoiding a huge blunder. So you, you want to, if you are going to pull a bluff off in the middle stage of the tournament, you better be uh, uh, picking your opponent right. And at, yeah. at this stage of the tournament, we would hope that you've been paying attention to what's been going on at your table for most of the early stages of the tournament. So now you have a pretty good idea of how your opponents play and how you can react to them. And maybe now you have some ideas based upon all of the hands you've been paying attention to in the past about how to exploit the tendencies of these opponents. And remember, every poker hand matters, You know, even the ones you're not involved in. My old poker mentor used to say, they should just call the game paying attention. Because if you're not paying attention, you're doing yourself a great disservice. Even the hands you're not involved in, you can see something, you're like, wow, that was a very weird hand. I wasn't involved in it, but it showed down, and I was not expecting to see those cards. So you make a mental note of it, and you're like, okay, not going to bluff that guy, you know? So pay attention to the early stages, and it'll do you a great service as you enter the middle stages. I think the next question well, is... Um, um, we're going to take one last question, and it's about... Sorry, please go on. Okay, tell me something about tilt control. If I lose a big pot, yeah, Oscar, please go. I tilt. What should I do? Is a question uh, from the chat. I feel like you know those t 10, 20 seconds after you just lost a big hand. I guess those are <laughs> you just need to let those pass. And um, I guess um, like don't immediately review the hand history immediately there. Like or message your friends or call people about it. Um, like when you get a, when you get involved in a weird hand um, that could potentially put you on tilt, I, I feel like it's important to review it later and just keep going on with how things are going because your other decisions are going to get affected then. So, yeah, do you agree? I, I completely agree with that. I mean, um, if if you lose a big pot, you know, it's 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 pretty easy to tilt. So, I guess the first step would always be to breathe to breathe and try to slow things down, you know, slow your mind down a little bit. Your mind gets racing a little bit when you get tilted and when you take a bad beat. Um, so, so breathe, slow your mind down, and then just recognize that the hands that you misplayed or bad beats that happened are completely, things in the past are completely out of your control. All you can do is make the best with what you have right now. So you just gotta let the big pots that you lose slide and get back to focus and try to play the best poker that you can. And if if there is a hand that's bothering you, just make a mental note of it, you know, and and take a screenshot of it. If you're playing online, or jot it down between hands if you're playing live, and then bring it back to the study group later. And and hopefully, you know, you can you can study it after the fact, after you're out of the emotional state. So uh, poker is, is is a lot about dealing with these emotional swings. Not everybody stays even keeled the, the entire time. So if you do go on tilt, don't be too hard on yourself. Just try to keep a clear mind and breathe and move 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 beyond it. That that's the best advice I could give. 
yeah like don't expect answers like have a ice tub uh, next to you jump in it every time you get a bad beat or jump in the pool or do something crazy there's nothing that's going to help you except just taking I that think, 20 minutes i think it was dev who asked that yeah Make a lemonade and chill. Well, exactly. uh, Devrath, <laughs> I hope you've got the answer to your question. But I'm going to answer the second half of that, which is, what do I do after I lose a big pot? I'll tell you what you need to do immediately after you lose that pot. Get one of these, <laughs> and then just <laughs> that should help you. <laughs> it's easier to do it in online poker because you're at home you can get a cushion and just scream your lungs out into that for like a whole 5 seconds <laughs> then that'll solve it out at least immediately so very good uh brilliant yeah come on come on guys the pros are sitting in front of me come on there is okay, got okay, to be fine. some way to what i just there did is. yes it is or you go hug your mom Go find like your parents or anybody in All the right. house. Right, I think we've had enough of fun and games and a whole lot of information and a lot of knowledge that we've got in the course of this last. Yeah, sorry, Sam. Oh no, that's okay. I think yeah. See now, Sam, it's okay. Tell us what you're thinking about. What's on your mind? Oh, it's it's going to lag and then relag. But I was just saying that's that's the yeah, that's the. Uh, there's a lot of hugs coming in my household. I'm guessing very soon. <laughs> I just thought I wonder how people would react live if you did that in the live tournament or if you just grabbed right. the next year and screamed it. <laughs> well, I think before all of this uh, technical difficulties overwhelm us completely. Well, uh, we've had a whole lot of fun in this last one hour, and uh, don't forget the much-awaited Poker Fiesta begins tomorrow. The final table series, 2.0, 7th to the 14th of March. Ten crores in guaranteed prize pools, lots of gold, silver, diamonds that are obviously going Sam Razavi's way. No matter who wins those tournaments. So, what are you waiting for? Get your game face on. Get that Instagram filter going as well. Thank you so much to Sam Razavi, Kevin McPhee, Muskan Sadi. Thank you guys so much for joining us uh, in this fun little chat. And we will be uh, talking to each other really, really soon in the coming week. It was great having you guys here on this live stream, and I hope uh, all our viewers had a good time as well. Uh, on behalf of Sam, Kevin, and Muskan, this is Peter Abraham uh, from Gut Shot and Glory FTS. Meet the commentators. This is the live stream. We will see you tomorrow evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good luck. See you on the FT. <laughs> oh.